from Latin America to North America. And there's all of these wonderful stories about the eagle and the condor. And the eagle is about and more birds. intellectual, tapers, just more about money and accumulation, all that stuff. Plus the condor is from Latin America, which is more about the heart and about emotions and feelings and the need for those to come together and to be in balance. So the bringing of the sticks and, and we did ceremony on the beach by the Tulum archeological zone, by the pyramid down there by the beach, moving, exchanging these sticks from the Latin Americans to this man who is from an Ontario First Nations tribe. But I, I love that when they were talking about economies, they said there were three, three big lies. And the first one is scarcity. And the second one is more is better. And the third one is you can't change it. So those are the three big lies that they ask us to question. I just found it to be an incredibly exceptional group of independent-minded people that have done a lot of work on themselves and really know the difficulties of living in community. They said that conflict, unresolved conflict, is the number one source of the failure of an eco-village. So they've all become masters at conflict resolution. And they continue to study it because it's, that is the most challenging thing in, in, in interpersonal relations. So that's one of the things that they really focus on. And then there's the whole permaculture stuff of you know living in harmony with the earth and figuring out how to do that without generating waste and just being very creative about making it easier because that's what permaculture is really about, is uh, having it be just part of your environment and just you becoming more and more part of the environment so that earth care and fair share and people care are all equally balanced and that's the core of permaculture ethics. Earth care, fair share and people care, which we seem to be lacking in a lot. They are all envisioning a future human community that works on this planet because what we have now is not working. What we have now is generating all this waste. I mean, you've seen the, you know, the plastic in the oceans and the, I mean, anywhere you go, you're aware of that. You're aware of the pollution in the air and how it's affecting us and how all of the environmental pollutants are, all of that stuff. And they're figuring out they are pioneers. They are figuring out how we, how we can do this. And it takes tremendous courage and tremendous heart and tremendous creativity. And so they're just an awesome uh, community. I would love to spend more time with these eco-village people because I just really resonate with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like pioneers of sustainability and also community living yes. in a more profound way. Yes. Now, I <laughs> sent that video out to you guys of um <clears throat> the kogi tribe did you see the link i sent to you i sent it to both of you that's a whole nother and Al that's aluna yeah <laughs> a whole nother part of this was this um there are four tribes and i guess they're calling it now the sun nations mm -hmm. as a collective i just was um communicating with the, the jedi and the redwoods group which is where i met Patty and where, she, and where Adam and she are posting to enlist those people to be involved in in uh, sending light to the Mayans who are trying to to uh, stop this train that that is like destroying the uh, cenotes. And uh, Patty put on a video of them like drill, drilling the stalactites and stalagmites. I mean, just obliterating them with machines, destroying what's taken tens of thousands of years for the earth to make and created these incredible grottos and sacred places that are such an important part of Mayan cosmology and Mayan spirituality and they're, what they're doing is I can't even believe you know it's just like really can people do this and they are and and pouring cement into the cenotes <laughs> what's the cenote exactly they are these underground um waterways it's like the aquas are close to the surface but they they they're all limestone ancient seabeds and um so we went down in them and swam in them. the water is beautifully perfectly clear and there are special cave fishes in it and stalactites and stalagmites 
mm -hmm. and, and going back into waterways and at many different levels and they flow. But that's one of the things that this group, they're not the Kogi, but they're the Arawako. Arawakos, there are four tribes that all occupy the Sierra Nevada de Maria, something like that. Mm -hmm. De Marta in uh, in Colombia in the high Andes in mm -hmm. Colombia and they were isolated for a long time but now there are some horrible videos that show that they are clear cutting right up where they are in order to make coffee plantations and the coffee plantations are uh, in, you know encroaching on everything it's really uh, mm -hmm. it's very important that we do fair trade coffee that we you know, be mm -hmm. very careful about where our coffee comes from because it they have they have one of the last strongholds of natural habitat and they have guarded it and they did a film 20 years ago called uh, messages from the elder brothers where they're saying look you folks you know mm -hmm. you're going to wreck this planet if you don't stop all this craziness mm -hmm. and um this is a more recent film about aluna and aluna is is this it's very feminine and it's very watery but it's where everything comes from it is what Three seeds matter, and they are masters of drawing on Aluna for creation in this realm. I understood that Aluna was kind of like the mother goddess in their culture. It was like their god, but they view it as a feminine god mm -hmm. in its earth, mm -hmm. and it, it's a consciousness of earth that they relate to, mm -hmm. and they learn to communicate with from a very young age. But has has no f form. It's yes. formless. Yes. But it is where, and it's unseen, and so, but it's, mm -hmm. the, they are trained, their, their um, spiritual leaders are trained. They're kept in dark caves for long periods of time, years, in order to develop that ability to communicate with unseen worlds. And they, everything that they do comes from them consulting and from the direction that they're getting from these unseen realms, from, yeah, from those connections that they have um, really nurtured and, and fostered to have that connection to the world that we came from, the world that precedes this world of matter, and to be able to interact in this one. So yeah, that, that newer, the one that you sent out, the one about Aluna is, um, he talks more about, I think he's got the pictures of the clear cuts and how they are threatened in so many ways. So the whole group, has come together and one of the four has lost its language so they're pretty mm -hmm. once you lose your language you've really lost the culture but they are um, gathered with the other three with the kogis and the arwakos and i'm not sure what the other one is it still has language into this group called sun nation and they are um, wanting to declare themselves independent from colombia and be a sovereign nation and that's what's going on and when they were there, they were really looking, they did a, a ceremony of abundance. And it, they just kind of landed in, in Chiltum, in this camp where the Kasa people had set this up for the interactions with the indigenous people. And it was like, Patty, did you, did you know that they were coming? And I saw them with their, they wear uh, white unbleached cotton hand, hand wound clothing. And these guys arrive and they've got the bags and like nobody knows who invited them. They just suddenly arrive. There's five of them and then there's a couple of North American um, young people that are with them. that are kind of accompanying them and, and helping them along. And they invited us to do ceremony. Like we've had a whole agenda of other things that were supposed to be going on, but it's like, okay, <laughs> the, these Kogi connections are asking us to come and do ceremony. I, you know, yeah, I'm in with it. And the ceremony was about claiming the abundance that we inherited at our birth and going back to our birth and realizing that we can claim all abundance, that we have access to all of it. And then doing these things with cotton, which is very important to them, cotton and, and balancing it, male and female, and as we were passing it and carrying it into little pieces and making little baskets to hold abundant skin. But it was all about how we can get better at creating abundance so that we can give it to the natural world. And they kept saying that, el mundo natural, el mundo natural, that we need this abundance for the, na the natural world needs this abundance in order to preserve it. 
that this is where the, the abundance that we have should be going, donations to the natural world. So that was pretty cool. And as they were talking about how they needed to generate this, I was talking to Patty about how we needed to connect them up with Adam. And we thought that Adam Apollo was going to be coming to um, where we were staying. They went there, connected them with Adam, and now Adam has been invited to undergo an initiation with the Sun Nation at the end of April. So that's all, and he says he doesn't know how that's going to happen because he's already committed to doing this class on divine sex. And he, <laughs> in the intro to it, he said, yes, I'm not sure about that fourth class because I've just been invited to go to uh, Colombia to do this initiation. And I don't know how that's going to happen, but it's like, so yeah, so that's a lot of things unfolded while we were there. And, and also the other major thing that unfolded was that Petty was in touch with this man who is a Mayan traditionalist black jaguar. And he was angry because he felt like they had not been included enough. They already have kind of a sore spot because all this development is going on. Nobody's talking to the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. They're just totally ignoring them like they do not exist. Like this is, you know, this has been how this culture has treated the indigenous forever. Like they're invisible or less than. And what he is saying is that not only are the cenotes themselves sacred, and important for the whole how you know how it all works how Gaia has created this ecosystem but he says underneath the cenotes there is a crystal pyramid and this crystal pyramid was built by the ETs and that there is an ET colony down under the cenotes in the Yucatan Peninsula so Patty came back from that and she says jump John, I gotta tell you about this. Because she had just met with a black jaguar. And he said that the Mayans all know this. That's what he says. He says that traditional Mayans all know this and they are getting ready. They have been protesting all along, but they have stopped the railway right now at Playa de Carmen. Mm -hmm. And they're hoping that um, they should be able to stop it in turn because what it's, just, it's just destroying these incredible places. It sounds and like they're standing there. Wreaking, wreaking yeah. havoc. Yeah, sort of like their own standing rock, their own version of standing rock, yeah. Yeah, and really wreaking havoc on their culture and their ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Not to mention the ETs. Not to mention the ETs. <laughs>